Greetings and salutations. Welcome once again to the Capeless Crusaders, your number one podcast for anything comic book related, especially in the Sacramento area. That's where we tend to be. We also have guys in L.A., though. We're pretty fancy. And Galt, which... Yeah, Galt. Uh, <laughs> my name is David Barry at Dr. Barry on varying social media. To my yes. left, we have. I love the grammar and I love the confidence on this one. No, hopefully, no, <laughs> no pussy footing around it. It's just like oh, we have the, we are the we are the premier podcast. I like this. Foolish mortals, I'm the Mad Piper <laughs> at that Mad Piper. Actually, I'm just the Mad Piper on Instagram. The Mad Piper. To oh, hold on to FaceTime. To the heavens. To the hev- heavens word. His confidence is almost as impenetrable as a specific Netflix series that just debuted this past weekend. This is the Azorian one, Anthony and Steve's. Uh, that was a good, the, Westworld? The, 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 yeah, Westworld. <laughs> big fan. That's big fan. Netflix. Marsden. I'm a big fan of Marsden. Sure. Yeah, Michael right. Crichton. Michael yeah. Crichton. Uh, joining us this week, we have our guest. Yes. To my right. My name is Malik, and uh, I'm here to talk about comics. <laughs> That is what we like, what we usually do. What's your handle? Wait, wait, this sounds so the comics anonymous. What was that? <laughs> is it, oh, and how Barry and uh, and how long have you been talking about comics? <laughs> uh, Twenty years. Uh, oh now. yeah, and my uh, my my handle <laughs> handle yes. is uh, Cut Dam Comic Casual, and uh, I'm here to talk about comics. There yes. it is. Does that sound that, better? That one was yeah, good. Okay, that one's cool. like comics. Yeah. That, that was good. mysterious. The first one was just like yeah. weird. I read East of West again this week. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of social media handles, you can find us on every social media, Facebook, Twitter, Everything. Instagram, Tumblr. We're on Snapchat now. If you use Snapchat and you just want to see us for a short period of time that disappears after 24 hours, we're also on YouTube and on iTunes. We would appreciate a five-star review sure we on iTunes and a subscription and stuff because then that gets us in front of more eyes. We've got a website coming. We have a website coming, but until then iTunes that helps us. Sure, that gets. We we use our Snapchat on Friday nights when we go clubbing and get hammered. Yeah, yes, because no? that's something yeah. that I do. No, that we don't do that. We don't. Well, do, we, I thought we, we did that. I this know. week we are going to be talking about none other than Power Man himself, Luke Cage, as was spoiled by the Azorian one. We're going to be talking about the first appearance of. We're going to be talking about the Netflix series. It was foreshadowed by the Azorian. Before one. we do that, though, <laughs> this past weekend. Uh, Existential Romeo mm-hmm. and Calm Down Warning Curtis Fisher joined myself at Empire's Comics Vault for the fourth annual Creative Women Minicon. Now, Ben Schwartz, Ben Schwartz, our favorite <sighs> local comic book store owner, uh, has put this event on now for four years. That's what annually means. Um, and he brings in some of the best and most talented creative women in the Sacramento area. Annually just means one year. <laughs> I thought it means yearly. No. Because no annual, but then yeah. the Lee, yeah, you, yeah. You, Ad, but annual, not four years. Annual, annual. That's like quatrannually. <sighs> I gave you media, and this is how you treat me. I'm sorry. Fine. I'm just. I mean, we were down at Empires. We were stepping that down. episode you should have already seen by now, but I wanted to recap it because you know I like to recap things. We were down there. We bought art. We took pictures of art. We. uh we, you know, that's pretty much appreciated the, art. Appreciated art, and now we're talking about how. It. How is art? How is he? Is art's he art's is doing he, wonderful. Fine. He left Everclear, but I mean, his life's better for it. The drawings <laughs> that we saw were also good. Regardless, Everclear. it was a fantastic episode. If you happen to miss it, I don't know how you would have because it should have come up before this one in the general queue. Go back and watch it. Go back and watch it again. It was fantastic. It was lots of fun. Now that being said, I think it's time to do something. All right. I think it's time to go around the horn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we go around the horn, uh, we go around the table in a circular fashion. Sure. Ooh. Yeah. yeah cir- circles. Like chi. Yeah. Merry like, go round. Yeah. And Circle. basically, we talk about a specific topic. This week, we're going to be talking about what we read this week. All right. Comic wise. Sure. Because we're a comic book podcast. And, uh, oh, that's what it is. I'm going to call out the Azorian one. Oh. Anthony Steves. Oh, God. How's Galt been treating you? <laughs> G- 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 Galt's been treating me fine. Yeah? How are the comic very... books over there? Oh, you know, they've been good. I went over to the local shops, uh, one of them being the Launchpad over in Lodi, California. Went there and picked up two comics myself. I picked up the old 
Outcast oh, by it. Robert Kirkman of Walking Dead fame right there. And I'm about to start it. I've not started it yet. Oh, but it's oh then it doesn't up. count for Around the Horn. <laughs> but he has it in his hand. <laughs> Dang it. But it's here. I'm showing. Fine. Look at here. Fine. It's undeniable. By Mr. Robert Kirkman of, of Walking Dead and Invincible fame. Ah. ah. See what I did there? That's okay. I will read the, I'll read the, uh, I'll read the, uh, what it says in the back, on the, in the back here, what this story's about. Go for it. Uh, Kyle Barnes has been plagued by denomic, denomic? Denomic, That's yes. Bad. Denominational. Kyle Barnes <laughs> has been plagued by demonic possession all his life, and now he needs answers. Unfortunately, what he uncovers along the way could bring about the end of life on Earth as we know it. Uh, I'm in. That sounds yeah. pretty good. That is the, uh, the first of my Halloween readings. <laughs> The, uh, the second one, as I go to my shelf here, oh, look at that. It's going to be Hack Slash, but I'll talk about that. I sure. think he like, planted that throughout his life. That was, it was a very, what about Bob? It's just like, there is a groundbreaking new, bo- uh, here it is, right off the show. No, no idea what you're talking about. That's next up after Outcast. <laughs> I was planted. No, you know what? I approve of those. You're getting in the, getting in the Halloween feel. Mm-hmm. As oh, you and I'm are, all imaged out, bro. They're both you, imaged. You are just insane when it comes to Halloween, which I appreciate. I mm-hmm. So, you know M- Malik, our guest, yes. what have you been reading? <clears throat> I did read uh, number four and five. No, four. So one, two, three, and four of Moon Girl. Oh yeah. And uh, the um, the satanic dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. um, so that was that was that's, that's been good. That's been Hulk showed up. Yeah. I, I, am I supposed to spoil things or no? I mean, I, you can. Okay. Yeah. Un- unless you know something that <laughs> you we are don't supposed know. to. <laughs> like okay. like like unless unless. Like a writer comes to you and says, "Hey, I'm gonna give you next month's. Right? Don't say gotcha. anything. Okay. Right. Uh, you're otherwise, you have an NDA. Okay. You're good. Just say, it, baby. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. A writer came to me and told me, "Don't say." <laughs> so, oh, okay. Well, say yeah. But I've been reading that, and it's it. been pretty fun, and uh, that's been good. My daughter loves it. That's kind of how I got into it. And but I've been at Empire Comics a couple times the last like two weeks, so I feel like I've been reading a whole bunch of comics. Yeah. But I, I haven't. I just read that one. You but just, I, you're just around them. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. Feel, you're so absorbing, just soaking them. that around up around yeah. the yes. comics. Yes, uh, exactly. Ah, uh, through osmosis, I believe right. is the uh, the scientific yeah. is that uh, Eddie Murphy movie. Oh, oh Oz. Is that is... <laughs> Osmosis Jones? Oh yeah. What <laughs> oh, have you been God, reading, Piper? Right. <laughs> um, mark the time. What time is it? Uh, it's time to get ill. Red <laughs> Fairyland. <laughs> 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 and it's a good book. <laughs> Uh, so, just the best, just the best thing about real fast, real fast. I just want to let everyone know that the writer of this comic pitched it as that title. Mm-hmm. Uh, Image told him, "Nah, it's a little bit too, you know, on the head." So he changed the title to "I Hate Fairyland." He's like, "What the I hate ever?" And, I'm writing it anyway. And every month now, there is a variant cover that has the uh, prodigal f bomb. Oh. I say that version because I only buy the variant version. <laughs> so. The censor is going to love, love this episode. It's I told him to mark the time. That's I was prepared. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I made a Beastie Boys reference. So you did. <laughs> you were not on the ball. Anyways, that episode is great. I won't spoil much, but... That episode or that issue? That issue. Yeah, whatever. The issue sode. Um <laughs> Yeah, well, that's so many spoilers. Um, there is Carnage. There uh, is a battle axe. Wonderful. There is uh, someone who has been cleaved in twain, Ooh. and there are Ooh. intestines. Oh. Uh, there was a flunky and a yes man, and then some other stuff I won't tell you because it relates to the last, the ending of the last trade. Got it. So you have I, to read that because it's a I'm spoiler, doing... a big spoiler. I'm picturing all these elements just popping up in a room as as Piper is introducing them. It's just it's comedy well, battle action. Of and drops. imagine Scotty Young, <laughs> like it's they're Scotty Young He's characters, so they're adorable, right? But I mean, it's it's just bloody as hell. A bloody it's, mess. I mean, it's a mess. Cool. It's, that that was what I read. It was I like good. It. Um, <laughs> I. Was, what did you read, Barry? Uh, I, I was at Empire's Comics Vault. You know, as yeah. we just continue to plug away. Um, going through some of his back issues, um, and I discovered the um, Savage Submariner, oh, yeah. a.k.a. Namor, mm. um, and it was a critical issue, I guess, I don't know, uh, where we basically met Namor in the classic black vest, black pants with the kind of wingy dings underneath his arms for the first time. He had, Before that, he was just wearing the green 
undies. Mm-hmm. No longer wearing the green undies. Now he's wearing the black vest. He's got the gold trident. And he looks awesome. Looking like Black Bolt. Looking like a little bit like Black Bolt, mm-hmm. but uh, but being a little bit more sinister. Uh, declaring war on the earth as he tends to do. Uh, Triton was there trying Christ. to be like, hey man, don't don't do that. Medusa was off in the corner. Medusa, because she was in the Fantastic Four at the time. Right. Because the 60s or 70s. 80s. Because them. Yeah, because yeah, because those. Uh, so that was, I, I love old school, you know, like Savage Submariner and just weird stuff like that. So that was what I was reading. Good. So that is our Around the Horn. So let's get on to the meat of the show. Mm-hmm. The mm. steak and the potatoes, if Ooh. you will. Potate. What is that? Potatoes. Do you know what he's? I don't. I don't. I, I, okay. No. Do we have potatoes? Yes, Do we have potatoes I've, here? I've heard of like um, potato. Pot, what's the other one? Potato. potato. Yeah, potato. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. Oh, he just said whatever. Do we have potatoes? I was just curious. No, you, no. You, you had garlic chicken earlier, I believe. That's right, anyway, that's right. Luke Cage. Is it time to go around the horn? Came yet? out this <laughs> week on Netflix, and we have a little feature called "The First Appearance of." where we go over the origin story mm. of a beloved character. And I think what else would we do before we talked about the Luke Cage show than talk about his origin as a superhero, because that is extremely important so people have some background. Now He's so hot right now. So hot. So, so for those hot. of you that don't know this, um, so hot. the Luke Cage comic and the Luke Cage Netflix series were actually very... In sync. They got a lot of stuff right in a wonderful way. They did say that he's from Georgia. And he's not actually from Georgia. He's actually from Harlem originally, but they wanted to have him outside of the area and then have him bring in. Steve, I think your beer is staring at you. It is. <laughs> eh, well, I got nothing when it comes to that one. So <laughs> Luke Cage, as a character, was created by Archie Goodwin, John Romita Sr., and George Tuska. Um, when looking at those three names, John Romita Sr. is the only one that I, I actually A lot of big players recognize. there. Yeah. Which, I- <laughs> whoo, um. So as far as origins go, we know that um, Luke Cage in prison for crime he didn't commit, um, beaten by uh, inmates to the point of near death, put into a cellular regeneration machine of types. Um, to that, bank. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that was also used to basically try to recreate the super soldier serum, the super soldier experiment, yeah. um, because that's what people... Everyone wanted to do. Everyone wanted to make a new a new Captain America. It went wrong. It gave him his powers. He then became bulletproof. So it went sure. right then. Exactly. Yeah. It went right, though they were trying to make it go wrong. Right. But it was one of those things where it worked out for the best. Uh, Luke Cage, also known as Power Man by many. 5,000. Um, exactly. Ah. Oh, good reference. Uh, so, like I said, bulletproof, super strong, um, fantastic hair. Just, just, mm. just on point. Um, he became known for his team ups besides his solo work, his team ups as the heroes for hire, especially with iron fist, misty Knight, Bubba Ray Dudley. Yes. Ooh, the, the 3d good... <laughs> was actually Luke Cage. I don't know if you guys knew this. I didn't he see that many folks that. through tables. Yes. Vince McMahon doesn't want us to say these kind of things. Right. I had no idea. But we're going to do it. He's yeah. also ready for this team up a powerhouse. He is married to Jessica Jones. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. 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 Despite the fact that they had a massive falling out. The last in the Jessica Jones show on Netflix in the comic books, they're married, they have a kid, it's adorable. Nice. Quick question. Yes. I thought he was married to Monica Rambeau. No. No. All, All right. right. All right, there we go. Move along. <laughs> That's That's that. Just the facts here on the cable screen. Sure. Series. Yes or no question. Continue. That's all we go for. Anyway. Mineral? <laughs> animal? <laughs> the first appearance of Luke Cage was actually in Luke Cage Hero for Hire. That was that was the first appearance of. He didn't jump, come up another comic. He had his own comic out the gate, and it was fantastic. I implore you to find it, read it, so you can know that the Netflix got it right, or you can just want watch Netflix and just know that they got it. They got it right. Did that go for a while? That run? I don't really remember. All right, I wasn't alive. I <laughs> see. That anyway, is no excuse. That, well, you have the internet. That's, that's my excuse for today. That being said, let's talk about the first half of. The season one, because we know it's only season one, because it was that good, right. of Luke Cage on Netflix. Initial thoughts. Do we like it? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, that was easy. I like that. <laughs> only the facts here on the game. <laughs> Does anyone not like it? No, everyone likes it. Okay, we're good. I'm glad we got that out of the way. 
Um, so that thoughts. concludes our broadcast, everyone. Take care. Good night. Oh, so in know. classic Piper fashion, <laughs> yes. I'm going to be talking a little bit later on when we get to some of these things, and it's it's going to seem, boys and girls, like I don't like it. Right. I do like this show. Oh, okay. It's a good show. Okay. I got you to have you know that. Oh, because but you have to be the dissenting opinion because otherwise we wouldn't have one. Well, this is the Mad Piper. I'm sorry. That's, that's, this is that's what he has does. become a shtick at this point because in time. Me, me and Leek, we loved it. Sure, I'm into it. Yeah. So and yeah. and the Steves, uh, he loved it. I was reluctant at first too. Really? Were you? Yeah. Well, let's start there. Why yeah, were you reluctant this. at first? Um. Well. Well, for one, I did not. I, uh, I didn't watch Daredevil. Uh. I didn't oh. watch Jessica Jones. Oh. I didn't watch Jessica Jones, so I'm with you. But I, I now, did, I did watch Daredevil. I did see a scene from Jessica Jones. I okay. think I like, I think I like, uh, like knocked on Curtis's door and opened it before he said came, come in. And then he was just watching and, it, uh, and it was like <laughs> Luke Cage and Jessica Jones getting it in. <laughs> yeah, that was a good episode. Yeah. And that Curtis was, was like, mm-hmm. episode. yeah, but it was, <laughs> it was, it was cool the first Holy time. No way. Well, it was cool the first time. Then, then like. It happened. That same reoccurring thing yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. Right. Keep knocking on Curtis's door, and he's watching that scene over and over again. <laughs> I think I left a shirt in. Calm, again, calm down, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so you, you you didn't you didn't have the 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 hype? No, I didn't. I did not at all. I saw the first trailer, and I was like, okay, that looks interesting. But I was not on it. It right. wasn't until um. The, the 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 second trailer came out like a couple of days before it dropped. Right. That's kind of what pulled me in a little more. Right. And uh, and I I think what pulled me in was seeing like how much Harlem is gonna be like a sta- a, a character in the show. Exactly. Yeah. The I believe it was the the creator, producer, one of them, one of them said that this show was gonna be a love letter to Harlem, and it was. 100 percent a love letter to harlem and i'm only halfway through. well the first six episodes yeah 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 the first we don't know the second half might be just you know just a breakup letter with harlem right. i'm not really sure uh <laughs> so that being said so we know you know the, the hesitation leak had what about you guys is was there anything any preconceived notions were you worried about anything were you excited about is steve's start with you what were your initial thoughts so as much as I enjoy the typical superhero movies where they're fighting some extraordinary, unbelievable enemy like the first Avengers or Age of Ultron or stuff like that, I love the vigilante superhero shows where the bad guy is something that could be in real life. Right. Mm. Um, you know, gang violence, criminal organizations, corruption. I love those stories. It's Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Daredevil are three of my favorites of all time. This fits right in with those. It's, right. it's, it's this bad guy that I could see happening in the real world. I mean, of course, Luke is this you know, unstoppable force, but right. his enemy is something that you could see in the news, you could see in your city. And the cast is unbelievable. Love the cast. It has this Tarantino Kill Bill feel to it. Right, like the like the music choices right. at certain points, and, and also um, the, the way they some, sometimes they show an episode where they show the beginning and it's the end, right. and yeah, and it comes back. And, 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 and before certain fight scenes, it feels like the beginning of the fight scene in Kill Bill. With the score music, the choice of the score feels yeah. like a seventies martial arts film. Also, right. that beginning, just that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, like, I love the feel. Oh, man, of it. that was it's, good. It's, it's so good. That's a good opening song. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I also agree that it is a fantastic opening song. Mm. So, what, what about you? Any thoughts, feelings going into it? Going into it, yeah. um, because you, you said you also haven't watched Jessica Jones. I have not. So you didn't really have. I didn't a background. Um, not with, not with that or with him. Right. Uh, I'd seen all of Daredevil. Uh, I didn't go in expecting it to be Daredevil. Mm. I knew he's a different character. I right. know a little bit about him already, so I knew this was going to be more of like a. Um, I'm in an urban setting, like he's like that's gonna be more on the street. Like Daredevil wasn't too much. It was in the office, there's a lot on the rooftops and stuff like that. I knew this wasn't gonna be that. Right. Um less brooding. Yeah. Le- gonna be less of this. I know he doesn't wear a mask. I know that's he's just a different type of hero. Um so I went in almost expecting nothing. Um I was just be like, all right, this is gonna be another and I, ex- I I don't know, I expected it to get a lot of praise, which it has. So I, it's kinda actually going to expectation so far. I agree. Yeah. I personally have had a ton of exposure to Luke Cage throughout the years in comic books and Bendis bringing him into the new Avengers and basically yeah. kind of revitalizing the character who had kind of taken a little bit of a slump. Um, I've always loved the Luke Cage character. I love the 
I love him as a, on his own. I love him when he's with Iron Fist. I love him when he's with Jessica oh. Jones. When he's a dad, like when he's with Iron Fist. When he's when he's dealing with Squirrel Girl as a nanny. Like I just everything about it is just you know you know how I feel about Squirrel Girl. Yeah. Sure, I love Squirrel. Girl. When Luke Cage is the nanny. Uh, no, no, Luke, Luke, Squirrel Girl is the nanny for Luke Cage's child. Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, I see. Ah, yeah. I understand. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, Steve, you should mm. hire a Squirrel Girl. She you could probably should. help you out. <laughs> I should right right now. So. <laughs> So, favorite moments so far that we've had. <laughs> oh, okay. He's Steve, gonna have to. Pick. I think if Steve's has one, I'm gonna let Malik go first, just in case you steal everyone's. Jeez. Go ahead, Malik. Favorite moments. Um, I mean, like, we only got half the season, so we know we don't have like the big. Yeah. Yeah. What's the word? I, re- I really, I mean, it's probably cliche, but I really like when uh, when he uh, goes to the his landlord's restaurant mm-hmm. and uh, thugs are trying to, you know, kind of, you know, handle their business there and right. take some money. And um, you know he kind of steps in, and he gets that that first punch thrown at him by the big guy. Oh, and, that was yeah. good. Yeah, and that that, that, that was just the yeah, slow motion. Really just, yeah, breaking that up was the bones. Guy Ritchie right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that like was. just watching that happen. I also like. like uh, I also like the scene with um with um. Uh, Misty Knight. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> oh, Misty Knight. I love how they casted her. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that Jessica Jones yeah. moment. Just, <laughs> that scene with Misty Knight. Because uh, I think I'm like I'm I'm like falling in love with Luke Cage's love scenes or something. I don't yeah. know. Anyway, <laughs> the man's got impeccable taste. Listen, and impeccable um, pecs. I'm also really Pow. feeling. Um, I, I really like uh, Cot- uh, every scene Cottonmouth is oh. in. He's oh, just incredible. God. But his, I like him from House of Cards. His name is not Cottonmouth. How dare you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Cottonmouth. That's not, that's his name not is my Cornell. Name. But yeah, no, I, he's yeah. The, the actor. Mahersh- got- Mahershala Ali is an amazing actor. He's who plays Cottonmouth. That guy, Cottonmouth. he was in um, House of Cards. Yep. Remy and he he was Remy in House of Cards and he was outstanding in that and he's it's perfectly cast for that. My yeah. favorite thing about that man is his voice. I think it's oh, on yes. point. Like oh this, God, that, yes. that guy's he, just got a timber and it's when amazing. he laughs. When he laughs, when he just lets out the cackle, I'm scared. Oh, uh, because you're because you're sitting there, you're like, is he is he actually happy? Is he actually enjoying this? Is he gonna throw you off a building? You don't yeah. know. Yeah. Also, that's the perfect voice. I always think of you two when I'm watching the video, and it's just. My man. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think of you too. Oh, that was good. All right, Steve's. I'll let you go because you were like chomping at the bit. <laughs> Do favorite, this. Favorite moment. What do you got? Favorite moment. Episode three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right before he's about to open up a can on the bad guys. Okay. He pops in his headphones. Oh, yeah. And it's Wu Tang. It Bring the ruckus. <laughs> yeah. And I was like on a connection with that because when that song comes on and I'm at the gym, I'm putting like seven, eight plates, and I don't care if I break my back doing it because Wu Tang is on, and there is no pain there when Wu Tang is on. Like for thirty minutes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's going nowhere. Everyone can look at me, and I'm not moving at all. But in my right. head, I'm lifting everything. You feel like such because, a badass because Bring the Ruckus is on, right? And now, that whole point was outstanding. Now here's my, here's my question. Now I agree, fantastic scene. Just the way they set it up, it's just it's awesome. Is that? I mean, even if you're bulletproof, is that really a good idea? Where you're storming, you're storming the castle, and you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna put in these noise canceling uh, beats by Dre, <laughs> I, so that I cannot hear what's going on, I'm and not, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm bulletproof like that man. I, I'm I become more reckless. Yeah, well, like I, guess. I I would do the same thing. He okay. he wouldn't have felt as pumped up. That's true. Without that's true. Wu-Tang, Could he have ripped off? RZA. Could he have ripped the door off of a car? We don't know. Yeah, yeah that was like his uh his like first line of defense. Yeah, yeah, that was. Oh, that was beautiful. The it was, it was not what it was, and what I loved about it is it wasn't as refined as Daredevil's uh, hallway scenes. It yep, wasn't right. as it wasn't as freaking bloody as the Punisher's hallway scenes. It was in the middle, though. Like all He's of the these middle. hallway scenes. It was man. Ju- exactly. It was just just ground and pound. Like I'm taking these dudes out, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna just you know I'm gonna be catching bullets in my face the whole time and not even flinch. <laughs> Which I mean, that's this is all really. Descriptive of each character. Yeah. Like, oh, this yeah. is just like all out. I'm, I'm expecting the wall. I'm very, expecting like, multiple brutal. hallway scenes when the defenders come about. I think it's right. right. It's gonna everyone, <laughs> too, yeah. everyone gets a hallway scene. <laughs> <laughs> you get a hallway scene and you. Nope. Jessica, you get in there do a hallway scene. <laughs> I was like, did, she, did Jessica Jones have a hallway scene? <laughs> we have to go back and look. I now I got to rewatch yeah. it. If it was, I feel like it was probably. Oh, wait, no. She if, probably has. If it. you guys make me watch it, 
I will go through that and I will let you know in which episode she has a hallway scene if if there is one. It's wait, it's watching. just a dialogue. It's just a dialogue scene. That's yeah. it. A She's walking dialogue. through a hallway. There's, there's, a, like lot of, there's a lot of dialogue in hallway scenes <laughs> when, in Jessica Jones. What about you, Piper? What what about you? Your so, favorite moment? I'm so I am far. a sucker for nostalgia. Uh, uh, yeah, you are. Dang it! I know. Oh, I, know, you're I, know. You I know where you're going. I know you should know where you're going. I love being nice, Malik. You are. And are you? So I love Marvel. Mm-hmm. For their costuming choices, <laughs> I love a good original costume. Mm. You can see where I'm going. Uh, yeah, like as yeah. soon as he gets out of that prison, yeah. spoiler alert. Oh. He's oh man, he's got he's like you see him rip these clothes off of this clothesline. And he's putting them on. He's got the, like the, the shackle thingies yeah, like so. that. He's got like the chain around his waist. He's like, feeling still got his little helmet thing in. Do, and just like button up half the shirt. He's half the shirt. And I'm, I'm looking at like. Mm. <laughs> stay like this. For, I know you don't because this is a flashback, but you gotta stay like this. It's so good looking. And then he realizes that he look, he look like he a says, damn fool. He's like, you look like a damn fool. I'm like, no, no, you don't. You look <laughs> awesome. Stay. And he didn't listen to me. Well, that was my no. favorite scene, though, I think so far. I liked it. So, my favorite scene had nothing at all to do with Luke, and that's why I guess I'm a little bit different. Um, my, <laughs> Get the, off the show. I know. So. <laughs> My favorite moment so far, just because I love the way it was shot and just the framing of it, is when Cottonmouth is beating the bejesus oh. out of uh, just forgot how to, I just forgot his name, Thiefy Boy. Yeah, exactly, Thief Number One, <laughs> Thief Number One with the fade. Oh. He got the fade in the in the chair. I hope his gangster name is Thiefy Boy. <laughs> Thiefy Boy. <laughs> so I don't, I don't punch you. I backhand you exactly until he a man. spits, mm. and then he says, "Now Ooh. I can treat you like a man." Right. But, that the, the him beating him up is one thing, but when he when he is pointing out his painting of uh Biggie, yeah, yep, and then he oh, you know, man. and then when the he throat. exactly when oh, he's when he gets man. right in front of it oh. and the crown just gets right there and he's everybody wants to be king. I was just like, Yep, oh, that's the one. Well done. That was well done. That was their um kingpin door slam scene, yeah, basically, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And it was it was just it was tasteful. It was dark. You, was, you ever notice half the time when you see Cottonmouth, there's there's a red light lighting up his face. Mm. Yep. It's, either, it's either like the street mm. or something like a stoplight. Like he gets a lot of this red hue, and you can just he's, even in his little you know, uh, you know room in his club, exactly it's like yeah. a kind of red faint exactly. light in there. He's he's just he's evil. Yeah. He's yeah. evil. That's but his place. He's got a code of conduct. Mm. And you know, the, the, yes, throw, throws his guy off the building for killing Pop unnecessarily. The look on his face, the look on his face when he finds out that Pop died, mm. yeah, and it, you see that it hurts him too. Mm. I was like, okay, you're you're bad, but you're human. And, and then, he still and remembers his roots. It's and a then big ju- family tie and all of this. Yeah. Like even, ju- even juice is up there, so, I mean, and juice is like, there's no way we're going to get into the Sons of Anarchy. This juice, case. like this is just going to happen. <laughs> like someone call Opie. And Theo then, Rossi. I, I literally, oh, I yelled yes. juice. I did too. Up on the screen. I yelled it juice. like that. I saw he just comes on to get his shades. I'm like, juice. <laughs> I think I just. I see you. I just started taking him seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> initially, yeah. Initially, you're like, wait, you're you're the you're the enforcer. I looked for, there you're, you're for for the, for. Uh, uh, now I can't remember the other. I guy's keep name. looking for the head tattoo. Yeah. I know. I was like, where are your lightning bolts, Sh- sir? Shave your head, dude. What happened? Yeah. Where is your cut? And then, you, and then you're just picturing him with Marilyn Manson, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Oh. Well. <laughs> so. I've already been to prison in one show. <laughs> let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about the connections to the Marvel Universe as a whole. Uh, sure. So, the incident. Exactly. We're all, it's always referred to as the incident. People talk about it in different ways. A kid slinging DVDs of exactly. the Exactly. Lee could mention that, where you know he's talking about, I got that, that big green guy. And, that was and, awesome. And I got the dude with the shield. The like He's got all of it. <laughs> yeah. all, the, all that bootleg. And oh, I, um, I like. Uh, I'm going back to Hell's Kitchen. Y'all are crazy here in Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. They, they 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 tied it in well um, to to Daredevil and Punisher, just because this kind of idea that these neighborhoods are extremely separate in a lot of ways, despite the fact that they're connected by roads. Um, they got the, the the separation of the events and the gangs and the heroes and the villains and we also, as always, we 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 mention the Avengers so we know that they're there, but we know that this is this is different. This is local. This is the defenders, you know, in their in their neighborhoods. This is Hell's Kitchen. This is Harlem. This isn't, you know, the world. This isn't a country getting dropped on a country by Ultron. Smaller battles. Very Smaller simple, battles. Yeah. Exactly. And so now the next. The next phase is, of course, going to be Iron Fist. And once we're given Iron Fist, then we will have the Defenders as a whole. 
We have all of them. Well, not not all of them, but that, I mean, the, the, the ones the ones that we're gonna get enough. Right. Exactly enough. We're gonna we're gonna have Jessica Jones. Uh, we're gonna have Luke Cage. We're gonna have Daredevil. We're gonna have Danny Rand, aka Iron Fist. Sure. Um, Punisher might begin his own show. I don't think he's gonna be involved with oh, Defenders though. I like that. I which, like the Punisher. I want the Punisher back. Which I think I think that would be fantastic. Uh, so overall, I have I have no complaints. Thus, and you, nope. I haven't really heard any negative from you. You were like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We haven't got, I thought we had like a negative thing. Do you, do you want to do a negative thing? Just a, just a little guy. Okay. Th- um, thing, things you haven't liked. Things I haven't, I think it mainly, so everybody's gonna be against me on this one. I think, and I think this comes from, as uh, Steve's might on, uh, on an acting front, the acting suffers a little bit, and I think sometimes it's because of the writing. Some of the writing's been done, it's a, it gets kind of cliche sometimes, and it gets pretty wooden. And still, did you get these lines that are like, um, they almost seem shoehorned in, like, uh, Pops' name, this line comes out of nowhere about like, is that how you got your name, Pops? He's like, nope, it's because Snap Crackle Pops. I'm like, you guys really had to put that in, you had to force that line in. And they do this every once in a while. I'm seeing this, I'm like, these... I mean, this is this is pretty sticky or schlocky at a lot of these points. Schlocky, ooh, schlocky. Yeah, schlocky. they do do that. I, I, I noticed that. Um, I noticed that. Um, I th- the uh, Luke Cage was talking to the chess player, mm-hmm. um, in the shop, and he's like, uh, yeah. and make sure that they don't forget your name, you know. And then he's like, "Where are you going?" He's like, "I'm going to make sure he doesn't forget my name." Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little okay. a little cheese, but, but 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 I mean, Luke Cage. You don't really have to look for these moments. Cheese, he's, they're everywhere. Well, he's got cheese in yeah. a good way. It seems like it's uh, it's it's like reminiscent of like black exploitation. Yeah, but it's bit, just yeah. kind of. It's like black exploitation in like a major key, right? You know what I mean, right? Well, yeah. I think that's I think that's also being done purposely because if you listen to that music, it feels like '70s soul throughout yeah. the sure. entire show. So they kind of it puts you as because again, wasn't Luke was Luke a '70s comic that came yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. Luke yeah. So it stays true to the era he came from, even though it's modernized. You get that feel with the music right. again, and again, like like Tarantino movies yeah. where this music that pops in and true. sets the tone for it. Um, I. I, I know the lines you're talking about where it seems like you had to put that in. I like how every episode, well, the, the first half of those episodes, it was always this basketball conversation that came up. Right. And it, it I love that it continued. Like, it even goes into the detectives when they're talking to each other about how her dad was a Celtics fan. Yeah. And he's all, you're a Boston Celtics fan in New York. No wonder you got a problem. It's Basketball has been used in both the barbershop. I think it was used with Cottonmouth and also used with the detectives on basically connecting the, that human element right, that we chat right. about and talk about. Yeah, they even added, uh, they even like uh, tossed in like Chris Stapp's Porzingis. Right. So that was pretty awesome. Pacino. Yeah. I don't yeah. God, Godfather and Scarface. That's why his name's up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I critique any of the arcs. Like the arc still makes sense. The story inside of it makes sense, but the dialogue is it, like, it'll pull me out of the story. And I feel like I've got two things to add on to that go for it one of them is that you do have to create an atmosphere where if your main character says fiddle faddle it makes sense sure. which they have to do because he says fiddle faddle uh he also says sweet christmas sweet that, that's christmas. Yes. the whole thing is that he doesn't, he doesn't swear um, I like it. which is a, just a wonderful just Ed crush jar. that he has to deal with i was hoping that would come around upon pops's death not from before right like that would have been what I think that would have nailed it in for me is like Pops had this whole like non cursing policy and right. he's like ah and Luke would have been like really nonchalant about it until Pops died then that gives it gravity and he's right. just like I don't curse well, that's actually, Pops wouldn't that, like that's it, a like, valid point kind of giving it like but the, the dollar the, the the um the curse the curse pot or yeah. the curse the, jar the swear jar yeah, yeah. The swear jar that that I think that was a nice little way that to image kinda, the way yeah. in there, he's yeah. got that and you make that promise right and and I think the only the only negative I really saw was mentioning it, but when pops explains how he got his name yeah. and they, uh, they show them like in the, you know, in the, uh, the alleyway beating that guy up and they come out and the dude is just like, Hey, can I get a picture? And they just immediately are just like, yeah, let's pose. We just beat this guy up in an alley. Uh, don't look down that alley. And then they take the picture and they just, and then he like, he, what he gives it to him. Like I, yeah. I, I, I get, I get like explaining why pops is the way he is explaining his connection to everybody else. And I get having the photo because that then ties cotton, you know, cotton has got the same picture. Right. I get that. But like cut up your flashback. So it's not just like, Hey, did you guys just beat up someone in an alley? Yeah. Would you like to take a picture in front of this graffiti? Right. <laughs> <laughs> just felt a little. Oh yeah, hey, it was a little know. weird, uh, but overall, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I I've not heard a negative review yet that had any real no. basis. One thing, I also, I'm really feeling like the 
the nobility yeah. in the show. Um, a lot like, like we talked about the code of ethics right. and yep. just that whole way of kind of dealing with each other and like a you know even if we're enemies, somewhat of a respectful manner. Right. Um, I really I'm really into that, and I, I think that was that's really dope that they're showing a uh, Harlem, right? You know, or the black community in a, in a in a light like that. You know what I mean? One of the the best lines is Cottonmouth when he's on the roof and he looks at shades and he says, you know, there used to be rules to this. Like when he like it's it, it takes me back to uh I'm trying to remember the the line oh from uh, Ocean's Eleven where it says you know he's like there used to be rules to this he's like yes. you, you know you, you you know it as Steve's <laughs> just say it, baby uh, there used to be rules uh, oh god uh, damn it oh my Some, god a, 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 <laughs> you'd, you'd whack a guy he'd come back like it's basically just yeah. there's, there there is it's a formula yeah exactly. <laughs> Exactly, there there are rules to it, and I agree. The the, the fact that they're uh, showing o- this Ocean's Thirteen, you shook Sinatra's hand, and there's a code for guys who shook Sinatra's hand. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that the, the importance of that, and I think that's a fantastic thing that they're highlighting. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the back half of the season because I yeah. am I'm one that I'm not there yet. I am I am I'm not either. I okay. finished the first half. I'm excited for the uh, the straightaway. Yeah. Into the final turn. Yeah, I have a I have a couple more little like tweaks and stuff like that. I don't say we're we don't need to go into them and stuff like that. The writing is kind of what pulls me out. Oh yeah, um, I'm getting the go ahead. Um, <laughs> this means talk. There's, um, there's Drew. It's good. Um, I think as a character, like I don't want to say he is weak as a character, but I think he starts out a little empty. You gain a little bit, mm. but like I know I get stoic. You're supposed to be stoic, especially right. when you're Luke Cage. He kind of comes with nothing a lot of times, or he's just a little too he's just, like. He didn't have any personality a lot right. of times. Well, he's a little empty want him inside, right? Infused. He lost his wife. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel, I feel like that's almost kind of who he is. But then sometimes he does. Like, right. sometimes he gets, I, I don't know, borderline creepy, but he get really, really playful with, mm. the like, with um, oh, where, Misty. Misty. And then, again, later on in the season, I don't know if it's too late in the season, so I don't want to say anything, but he'll, <gasps> he, he, he does this, and they're just like, where him. is this coming from? Because right. I've got nothing from you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're just like, oh, no, it's good. Like, I'm uh, it's just different kind of guy right now and and then it'll, i'll drop it in 15 seconds and be like um all right all of this said though they are legitimate complaints i feel i still enjoy watching this yeah. show like i think i've made it as far if not farther than anybody in the podcast yeah so you, you are you are <laughs> i'm like all ahead full. i think i'm on episode nine as we speak so like uh, i'm beginning, actually I'm gonna begin nine uh drew at drew jmc has actually finished the season okay so drew of course oh, he did mama ain't here well yeah no he's close so, i apologize i, I do want to uh, shout out to an actor on the show, Frank, I believe it's Whaley or Wally, who plays Detective Raphael Scarf. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That guy who started his career by being Brett sitting in that chair. Yeah. And Sam Jackson was raining down upon him in Pulp Fiction. That's that guy? Do they speak English that's or what? Him. That's Brett. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that dude. That is Brett who gets blown to hell by Sam Jackson and John Travolta. Yeah. And here he is today at Luke Cage. The more you know. Boom. He's still doing He's <laughs> still working, man. A dirty cop. Mm. <laughs> say what again? He had, say what again? Don't, don't say it. Don't he say did it. he did have one of the worst lines in the in the show. Where they were just going like, mm, some of these guys got out, and he went like, and some got dead. I'm like, are we at CSI right now? <laughs> oh. What am I watching? He almost nah, pulled nah. his shades off and s- <laughs> Exactly. So he's got a scene with Nick Fury. <laughs> yeah, basically that's how it is. Let's you know hope- what? Marvel is just making a big cohesive glue yeah, they out of the acting universe. I think they're just gonna steal everybody. There's not gonna be anybody eventually. Left. Everybody will have been in Marvel. Well, I think a- that's not a bad thing. I think that's a good problem sure. to have. The fact that we have so much content that we need to catch up on. We got so many books we need to read. I think it is a wonderful time sure. to be a comic book fan. Oh, this is the prime. Exactly. It is the, I would call this the new golden age. The platinum age. Yeah. Ooh, platinum. There it is. Rather than going down in our medals, we're going to go up in our medals. So. (laughs) Vibranium age. Ooh. Are we there yet? Or we're going to get some adamantium. What if the next age is better, Malik? (laughs) We're going to have to make up a new new element. Antimantium? We'll figure it out. Yeah. Stronger, antimantium or vibranium. Who knows? 
Dang it. It depends on the kind of vibranium. Let's not go with that. That, that, That's a whole episode. Let's do that. We'll do a segment, Wolverine versus Cap, and see. Uh, I think Uru is actually the strongest of the metals. Anyway, for the Capeless Crusaders, (laughs) my name is David Barry at DR Barry on varying social medias. (laughs) Five the Capeless Crusaders. You got the Mad Piper. (laughs) How dare you? (laughs) On the FaceTime, joining us finally. This is the Azorian one, Anthony and Steve's Netflix. What do you mean there was an error? No, no, no. Oh. Well, we've lost him. And there goes the iPad. Goodbye, Joining vegetable us. pizza. <laughs> and our guest for the evening. Yes. Thank you for having me, uh, Malik. Course. And uh, giving everybody high fives. <laughs> <laughs> He's dribbling give a ball the, sideways. Giving the production <laughs> team high fives. Uh, for Curtis Fisher, Kitty a.k.a. Paws. Calm Down Warning and Existential Romeo, and Drew JMC, Drew McClintic, right. and Tom, Boom. Tall Dark Not yeah, Ugly, on it, everything, on everything, Tom. on everything, the we are the, like the Capeless yeah. Crusaders. Yeah. A good night. Oh, it's back up. Netflix. Yeah. <laughs>